Okay, let's talk a little bit today about how you can use Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows to mask or to remove sensitive data from your data as you transform it and as you move it from one store to another. So for this demo, I'm going to use a different data set this time. I'm not going to use my movies data set since there isn't anything necessarily sensitive in that data set that I want to mask. So I'm going to use a um, fake uh, loans data set that I have. So this data set is a CSV file. Let me go into the data flow by double clicking on my data flow activity in my pipeline. And you see that I have this loans CSV file. And as we look at the uh, projection on this, um, now uh, this is a CSV file which means it's text. So everything will natively come in a string in ADF, but I have used the detect data type feature. So that's, I asked uh, Data Factory to use the data flow feature to go and find uh, to go into uh, infer the data types from each column but looking by sampling some of the data and so i have the data types now you can see that there are uh, 74 columns and if i go to the inspect tab i can see that about the metadata 74 columns some of these columns are going to columns going to have some sensitive data in it that i do not want to um, land in my database and so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of those fields and we're going to mask some we're going to remove some of them but to get started, rather than working from a file, I want to show you how you could uh, mask a database directly. I'm going to use Azure SQL Database. So I'm using my source CSV file just to load up the database. So I'm going to load it into my loans database without making any changes. This is just a source to a sync. This is essentially a copy within mapping data flows. So I ran this before I started. <coughs> I started the demo. And so I go back to that pipeline that I started from. You can see that it took four minutes. Uh, to look to land all the uh, rows. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at first of all the execution plan on this data flow. And you can see there's the simple source to sync. 88, uh, sorry, 887,000 rows. The time it took within uh, data frames within Spark was uh, just about a minute and a half. The rest of the time was spent um, landing the data, loading it, um, I/O uh, functions, as well as marshaling the um, the scripts and the payload over to the Databricks cluster and executing that. So it took four minutes. Now I can look at my SSMS, my SQL Server Management Studio, and I can see that in there I have all of the rows. Are there 87,000? And, uh, and some change. And you'll see that here's the data. Now let's take a look at some of the data that we might want to mask. Maybe let's take um, member ID. So member ID is an int. So in that one, maybe we'll just go ahead and we'll just remove that. Let's take a text column as well. That might be something that we might want to um, get rid of. And what looks good on here. So let's go ahead and let's take the, uh, I'm going to take the employee title. Let's take employee title. That's a nice string that has some readable text. That might be something that is, you know, uh, personally identifiable. And so I want to mask that. So we'll remove and we'll, we'll mask. Okay, so let's go back into Data Factory and let's uh, modify this uh, data flow a little bit. So the data flow was the simple uh, copy, the uh, loading of the CSV. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and let's mask and let's remove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my source to that same data set that we're using on the other side of this, which is the uh, landing of the data, which I call loans to DB. Let's go ahead and take that data set now as the in input. Uh, there's going to be no schema drift involved here. This is going to be exactly the landing um, the set of, row, the, of columns coming in to the set of columns and rows going out. So on the projection, now we're going to see that there are the data types that came in from Spark when it read the schema from the database. Uh, now let's go ahead and, uh, by the way, on the sync side, we'll just leave everything the same. I have auto mapping on. So auto mapping is going to essentially take everything coming in and leave it the same. Dollar dollar is the same name for every column coming in. And true means everything passes through. So let's keep auto mapping on. That looks good. And I'll keep that same data set. So what we're going to do is, because I'm keeping the same data set, I don't want to duplicate the rows, so I'm not going to allow inserts. I'm going to instead allow updates. So everything's going to be an update. I cannot do this until I have set a, um, uh, a an alter row transformation. So we're going to go through that. But I also don't want to truncate. So I had truncate on because I was removing anything I had from previous demo executions. So we're not going to do any table action. Now we can update, and now we can add an alter row to define that update. In fact, it tells you right here that you'll want to add an alter row, and it does that for you. That's great. However, before we do that, let's go back into that um, data. Now this is going to be the preview. When I um, press preview here, 
This is going to actually run essentially the same thing, the um, uh, select from that database. It's going to give me the results. And I'm only going to get a thousand of those because you see in debug settings, we default to a thousand rows. I can change that, but I, for me, a sample is going to be just fine so I can get an idea of what that data looks like. All right, so remember now we're going to take member ID, we're going to blank that out, we're going to make it null. And then the other column that we're going to take is going to be the employee title. That's a nice long string. <clears throat> and we'll, uh, we will mask that. I'm going to use a hashing algorithm. I'll use a SHA2 to mask that. Okay, so before we do the alter row, let's do a derived column. Derived column will allow you to either create new columns <clears throat> or to modify existing columns. In this case, we will actually write in line in place to change those columns because I don't want that data to be visible. So for member ID, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to change that to null. And I, I want to um, also, I, I need to uh, cast this because this is an integer and null. Uh, it needs to know what type of null you want to use. So I'm going to say two integer null. Great. Now the second column, actually let's go ahead and call this drive column as uh, masking. Ah, masking, masking. And now let's take the employee title, EMP title, and let's go ahead and let's mask that with a hashing function. So we use SHA2. And then the, um, we're going to, uh, we'll say 256 is what the um, number of bytes that we'll use. And then we're also going to say that we want to do it against the employee title column. And then just uh, Final parenthesis there, that should work just fine. We can go ahead and click a refresh here with the expression builder so that we can uh, check to make sure that everything looks fine in terms of the hashing. Okay, we are indeed getting our hash values out of those. Great. That's it. So now before we can send this data back to the database. Remember, the source and the sync are pointing to the exact same database, which is updating in line. We need to set an update policy because we're allowing only updates here in this case. So what I'll say is I'm going to update everything. Okay. So that's because I'm not taking any particular rows. All of these rows have this sort of data that I want to mask. I'm going to say true. I'll tell you if my policy is true. And then I say update. So now what's going to happen is that as soon as you go to, uh, let's do a data preview. Oh, I do have an error. Let's take a look at that. Uh, require key kill. Oh, yes, my bad. So what you also need to do when you use an alter row is you need to set what your key is so that EDF knows uh, what you're going to match on. And so we have an ID column. So we use ID as our key. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a, um, I'll do a data preview here. Now when you are within the uh, debug within Dataflow in your data previewing. Uh, there is no data being written. Uh, this is all a snapshot of what is in memory within a data frame within Spark at that time. And so there we are. Member ID is gone. So we've hidden that. And employee ID is now a hash. Great. So our debugging tests have passed. Let's move on to the pipeline. I can use the exact same pipeline because all this pipeline does is just run that single data flow activity. And it is uh, the same data flow that I had used to just copy and seed the database from the CSV file. Now that I've modified the data flow, I can rerun this pipeline with the new data flow definition. And notice that I used the debug button within the pipeline view to do that. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to um, I already have my debug session enabled. So when I click debug in the pipeline, ADF will use that debug cluster. So it's using an already warmed cluster. So the uh, execution will be really quick. And this is great for testing. One thing I could have done, I, I'm not going to do it here because I didn't really want to test. I just wanted to um, get all of these rows updated. If you want to also test on a sample of data within your debug um, run in pipeline, you can set on the source settings within your uh, data flow, uh, you can set sampling enabled. So when you set sampling enabled, you can set the row limit um, that we use. That would make the um, debug run here from the pipeline use just that sampling of data. So we're at about a minute five. Let me see if uh, some of this data is coming over to the database yet. Um, what I'll do is, uh, let's do this. How about, uh, I know what I can do. So let's do a select star. Go all the way down here. Let's do a select star, and we'll say where. Uh, so the column that we nulled out. So that'll be a good test. A good where clause I can use. Remember ID. 
and our ID is null. And we'll see if we're getting some of those coming in yet. Okay, don't have any yet, so let's just wait a minute while the processing uh, runs up against the um, data flow engine, and we'll come back in about one minute. Okay, so I, I went ahead and just added a count star for the number of loan records that were updated to have a, a null member ID, and you can see that we're at 887,000. So if I just do maybe a top uh, 100 from, um, from loans, you can see that the member IDs have been nulled, and there is that hash value of the MPID. Now back on the um, data factory, hang on one second, and there we go. I do want to show you a change that I made in between runs while I was paused. The first run took uh, way too long, it was almost 10 minutes. The second run took about six minutes because I modified the partitioning. So uh, I'm not going to have the time to focus too much on um, performance and tuning the partitioning here in this video, but I will show you what I did here. So for the source, reading from the database, I used the source database um, optimization. So you go under optimize, and you set the partitioning type, and I set it as source. Now I used a column that's an ID column so that I can uh, use that as my identifier uh, to create my partitions in Spark. So I said four partitions because I don't have a very large cluster here. Um, and of course, a larger cluster would have the execution time take less. Now on the transformations themselves I left the current partitioning but over on the sync I changed the partitioning there too. I used round robin, I gave myself 20 partitions and I set that and then it took um, a lot less time, about half the time to execute and now we can see all the rows that were updated there. So anyway so that's an end-to-end -end idea of how you can use uh, concepts like masking and uh, removing sensitive data uh, from your data with Azure Data Factory Mapping Dataflow.